In the last video on this channel, we talked about how we were getting acquainted with our new high-speed camera, the Kronos 1.4. And I think it's about time we set something up and try to get some cool high-speed shots with it. And for us, that means breaking some things. Some of the things that we'll start with are those that we've filmed before, albeit with not nearly as nice of a camera. First up, we have a clip from a video we uploaded in 2011, where we swing a glass bottle filled with colored water into a pry bar to break it. I always really loved the angle of this clip and have wanted to recreate it. The big problem with the footage from the Casio EXF1 is that the compression really kills the quality when there's something really detailed like all this water splashing on the screen. Some of the newer cameras like our Sony RX100 and the Kronos do not have this problem. For the things we're looking to film in this video, we're going to need several glass bottles, so let's see what we can dig up. These particular bottles were leftovers and already sitting around, plus they're nice and clear. We'll use a razor blade to scrape off the labels, put a few drops of food coloring in each one, then fill them up with water and seal them. Unfortunately, we didn't have bottle caps, but a piece of duct tape and a zip tie should do the trick. We'll lay out a tarp so that we can pick up at least the majority of the glass pieces and set everything up. Unfortunately, when trying to frame this, we immediately encountered a problem with our setup on the camera and weren't able to get it in position to film the downward shot that I had liked. Later on, we made some modifications to the mounting and figured out how to do this, but for now, we'll just use the RX100 to capture that shot and use the Kronos at a bit of a side angle. Unfortunately, this was kind of a lot to focus on, and uh, I kind of missed the crowbar a little bit, just barely tapped it, so it's a bit out of frame. But, uh, well, we've got more bottles, so I guess I'll just grab another one and go for it again. The framing still wasn't quite perfect, but I'm pretty happy with that shot. So how about the Kronos footage? This next bottle we're going to break was a bit inspired by a video we'd done previously. Also in 2011, we dropped a 15 pound weight off of a ladder into a bin full of water. Really just to make a big splash. This time we have a 40 pound weight and we're going to drop it right on top of the bottle. Unfortunately, we missed the shot for the Sony camera, but we do have the footage from the Kronos. Not that you need a high speed camera to see what happened though, the bottle didn't break. So we went ahead and reset, and I lifted the weight up even higher and gave it another try. Again, that was not the expected result. The dumbbell dropped straight onto the bottle and just punched it through that half inch piece of flake board. So we'll uh, retrieve it, and I guess just cover up that hole, and turn the bottle on its side to make sure we'll actually break it this time. And that definitely did it. Unfortunately, we still don't have footage from the Sony, but the Kronos did a fantastic job at capturing this moment.
And for the next bottle, I figured we'd do something simple and go ahead and grab a golf club. We had done this one more recently and uploaded this video in 2016. So we'll set up the bottle pretty much just like that and see what we can do. Hopefully I can at least hit it. It's a little bit of a mad dash to do this and then trigger the cameras to make sure the footage is saved. Let's not take away from the fact that I did hit the bottle, although it wasn't exactly with the part of the golf club I was trying to hit it with. And next up, I figured we'd break some glass with the pellet rifle. We've done this in the past in quite a few videos, but this is one we filmed, albeit with a more powerful rifle, back in 2016. This time we'll be using the Break Action 25 caliber Walther Falcon Hunter. And these are the pellets we'll be using. Compared to your average 177 pellet gun, these are a decent size. Just for kicks, we got out the chronograph and fired a few rounds through it, and we'll use that to calculate the muzzle energy of this rifle. Averaging out that string of three shots, the gun puts out very close to 26 foot-pounds of energy. So let's impart that energy onto one of these glass bottles. And that worked pretty well the first time, so we'll do it one more time on our last glass bottle. This time the clouds were interfering and the light outside wasn't exactly cooperating. So it's a bit blurrier and noisier than it should have been, but we still managed to get this shot out of it. The maximum frame rates on this camera sure are impressive. There might not be a whole lot of pixels at that frame rate, but I still find it really impressive just how slow it is. I also think this is a really good example of how compositing the footage from the two cameras together can enhance the viewing experience. Instead of just a blurry little rectangle, you get a larger blurry rectangle within which you can view the smaller blurry rectangle. For some of the first actually planned test shots we've recorded, I think this turned out pretty well. It was certainly an informative experience, and we'll have to use all that information when filming other stuff going forward.